Hi everyone, Julie here. I'm going to demonstrate how to do an image transfer onto paper. It can also be done onto cloth, canvas, or wood. A smooth surface will give the best results. So if you're working with wood, you might need to sand prior to doing this technique. I printed off some birds onto plain copy paper with a laser printer that uses toner. Uh, I've got a color version and two black and white. This one I have cut out closely around the bird uh, so there's less paper to remove. You might want the whole thing so I'm going to do all three. Uh, the best photos have a good contrast between light and dark which can be adjusted prior to printing the image you want to transfer. In the next session, section I've included uh, how the I do that uh, using two pieces of, um, well, two resources. Um, and you can look at that if you like. I've got uh, paper that I'm going to glue the bird down onto is really a recycled label envelope from, from uh, work. They throw them out and I love to use them. It's uh, probably about 140 pound, very smooth, like Bristol paper. I also like to use uh, Canson watercolor paper. It could be Bristol paper. This is a cold press. It doesn't have much of a grain to the cold press. Hot press is smooth. That would be fine. And this is 140 pound. Something fairly heavyweight works best. Uh, I've got choice of glues here. I like to use Golden Soft Gel Matte or Liquitex Matte Medium. They both work equally well. I tend to lean towards the gel. It's thicker, which means it has less water. So the image uh, bubbles, um, or shall I say, ripples less. And um, But I've used both equally. I also like to use gloss varnish at the end. It's a little trick that I've figured out along the way that uh, produces a pretty good uh, image transfer. Spray bottle of water, paintbrush, an old scruffy paintbrush. This is a dollar store paintbrush. Um, a spoon, a silicone spreader, an old credit card, a piece of paper towel, this is industrial strength, and a rag. And that's it. Before I begin the image transfer, I'm going to show you where I get my photos and how to adjust the contrast, change the photo to grayscale, flip the image, and crop it. I'm using Unsplash, which is a free resource full of copyright free images. And then I open up the image in Fastone Image Viewer, which is a free software program for desktop computers. This can also be done with any photo editing program like Photoshop, GIMP, and even Microsoft Word. The image can also be adjusted on a cell phone prior to printing. So when I get to unsplash.com, I'm going to enter some search terms like cute bird to find a free image. Now in order to get to the free images you will find a little drop down here. Click on free and find the cute bird that you want. And I'm selecting this one and you'll see at the bottom left here it says free to use under the Unsplash license. So I'm good to go. I'm going to download it for free and it saves to the download folder on my computer. It might be different on yours. And it automatically opens in Fastone Image Viewer. And when you hover over to the left, the toolbar opens up where I click on grayscale to change it to black and white. And then I adjust the colors and contrast and brightness to my liking. And when you click on this button on the on the bottom right, it says hold down to see the original image. 
you'll see how much the adjustments made and can keep adjusting. The next thing I'm going to do is crop it and make the selection and hit crop and if you need to flip it horizontally you can do so here right click save as and save it wherever you like before i glue down the image i wanted to point out that when the bird is printed it's facing left when i glue it down the end result is the bird is going to be facing right. So if you want the bird facing a certain direction, keep that in mind when you print the image off. Um, the other important tip is um, that I'm going to be applying glue to this side and I really want to avoid getting glue on the back side because I need to wet the paper to peel off the paper and if there's glue on there it might not come off. I have gotten a speck on before and um, it didn't seem to matter much because the paper peels off in layers as you'll see. So um, I'm going to get my spatula here and apply it to both the paper and bird you really want to get a good coat on there and not miss any areas it's really warm here so it <laughs> got to work fairly quickly so when I put the bird down face down I'm going to use the credit card and swipe from the center out and remove the excess and not get it on on the back side. Now, here we go. And sometimes I will use a little palette knife if I have to get and push down on that area. And when it's done, I take my spoon and burnish. I'm not moving the paper because if I move the paper I might get pick up glue from the other side. There we go. And the next one. This one I'm just going to let's try this here. Just going to glue down the bird, put glue on here. Some people like to put glue on both. Um, as long as you get good coverage and you don't miss any spots, you should be fine. And number two. Oops, there we go. I want to smooth away any bubbles. This adheres the image to the paper. Make sure you get a good bond. And the last one. This is actually my first color transfer. Well, I did one prior to this video, and I really don't see them that often, color transfers. But it worked out beautifully. So uh, I'm actually was quite surprised. There we go. And where is my card? There we go. Beautiful. You could also just sometimes I'll put the excess onto 
under the edge of the jar of the glue. Uh, what you don't want is to pick up any of the glue that's dried on the edges and get chunks of glue underneath, which might tear your image. Okay, and burnish for the last time. I'm gonna let this dry overnight. Uh, you could dry with a heat gun, but I think uh, drying overnight, let it dry completely uh, is best. And I will see you in the morning. Good morning, everything has dried uh, and cured overnight. Um, paper, even though it's quite heavy, still bent a little bit, so uh, that's easily rectified by flattening it. Um, I'm going to pre-wet you can eat all three of them so that they can uh, the paper can soak before I start peeling. You can also use a paintbrush. I want to allow that to soak in before um, I start peeling off and zoom in on one of them so you can get a good close-up look. Got quite a bit of sheen going on there. And if you look, I'm going to start on one side and you can see how the paper's peeling off and rolling. And as you work and as I work and peel these off, the layers underneath are dry, drier. Um, so I will keep moistening that and wetting it. And when you do get down to the ink, it does feel smooth. But this is not a perfect process. In other words, I, I called this the imperfect image transfer because it's almost impossible to know exactly when to stop. How do you tell? Well, when I dry this, and there's still layers of paper on top, the image will go cloudy. And the cloudiness is the layers of paper on top. Now, this is where I'm using my, uh, my heavy duty paper towel. I just accidentally grabbed it and started working with it um, in some recent transfers that I've done and it seems to work really well because as you work it leaves all these this paper on top but it also peels off the paper so you can't really feel <clears throat> Excuse me, you can't really feel um, what's going on and it could roll off some of the ink. Can you see the ink? No, uh, not on the paper that's coming off. So it's a bit of a tedious process. And so uh, when I say imperfect, uh, in the end, I will try not to, um, will probably remove some of the ink in spots. And that's why this process is something that you want the end result to be more like a, a faded old uh, photograph. And, um, I mean, if you want a perfect transfer, you just cut out the bird and glue it down. Um, 
So why do you do this? Well, for that look and and also sometimes for transferring a very complicated image that is, well, you could trace it out, but to use as a base to, um, to start um, working on with different layers. So for example, this bird here, uh, this is another, this is a chickadee, and with all these feathers, I found it was probably going to be really challenging. So I worked with an image transfer underneath, and it's buried underneath layers of acrylic paint and inks and pencil crayons and markers. And I had to cut this out exactly so that it would sit on top of my my mixed media background. Sometimes you don't need to do that. Um, it depends what your what your end goal is. So I'm actually going to blow this dry to show you how it goes how it goes cloudy. And you can see. Don't need to dry it too too much just to see that all that cloudiness represents paper on top of it. So I'm going to spray and continue peeling. Is this kind of like when you pick up a rock in a lake or a river and it looks really nice when it's wet, but when the sun dries it, it looks dull. So <laughs> I was trying to think of a way to explain um, what this process is like. And so it, it can be frustrating when you uh, do this and in the end you just you keep getting this cloudiness. You dry it and it's cloudy and it's dry it and it's cloudy. Well you can't keep it wet forever. So I uh, did mention that I have a bit of a trick where I use the gloss varnish. I'm going to dry. Now that's really cute. It's it's subdued. You could um, use this as a as a base and paint over the bird. You could just fill in the dark areas. I believe I've lost some paper there. And um, that's part of the wing, but just beside here, there's a bit of a speck. And that's really, really quite good. I'm going to do another round. And I can I find with the black ink, you can really feel feel it once you get the layers of paper off. Um, unfortunately, with white, there is no ink um, in pure white areas. Uh, the printer doesn't have a white cartridge, so it leaves behind the white paper. So there's less ink there, if any at all. I'm working on my craft mat that makes it for an easier cleanup. Actually, it's not a it's not a craft mat. It's a barbecue mat. It's called the Kukina, and uh, I got it at Home Depot. Uh, I think they're only maybe ten fifteen dollars. That's Canadian, and. Uh, it's heat resistant. You can throw it on your barbecue, throw it in the oven, and uh, I find them uh, less expensive than the craft mats you can buy on 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 Amazon.
Well, that's looking really good. There's quite a bit of cloudiness on the feet. I'll try a little bit more down here. Now you can see as soon as I wet it, it it just it looks beautiful. That that's that rock under the water analogy. So I thought, well, why how can I how can I keep that wet looking that wet look? because uh, it, it looks so much better. Oh, I forgot to remove, I forgot to remove some paper. So there's a little bit more. I just, I really don't want to go too far. So in the beginning, I go fairly quickly. And as I work closer and closer to the image, I will, um, take more caution and slow down, maybe not wipe as hard. Oh, I'm going to dry it again. wet it and I'm going to wet it again and then what I'm going to do so it's, there's hardly any moisture on there at all but there but it is so I'm going to take some of my gloss varnish in a uh, yogurt container lid and I'm going to seal this while it's wet. And that is something that I discovered on my own. I'm sure someone else has done it. So let's see what happens when I dry it. And the reason I use gloss is because it's quite it's 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 see-through when it's dry. A matte medium uh, leaves a cloudy finish. And that, my friends, is a pretty fine image transfer. I'm going to work on the next one. I did pre-wet it, but it's so warm here today <clears throat> that uh, everything's drying very fast. So I'm actually going to spray the other one that's out of camera. Okay. Now this one is the whole image and if you're lucky it'll come off in one peel and um, as I mentioned in the beginning it's important not to have glue on the back drastic amounts of glue I would think but I mean I did drop uh, put a little bit once and as I peeled off the paper it rolled right off with the peels so the paper underneath is is wet, but it um, because I let it sit. And so so I'm gonna wet it again and just keep going. At that point. It's pretty hard to get rolls of paper now. You're going to get a few, but it's coming off in so many different layers. And it's, oh, there, look, I've lost a whole section. I went a little too fast, maybe. Maybe it's not wet enough. Um, there's a lot of variables. Well, a few variables, wet or dry. 
your finger, the pressure, the amount of water or lack thereof, hence wet or dry. And I find this, um, this wet paper towel is really, really helpful. Um, some people have used, uh, in the past, I've, I've used um, a J-cloth. Do you remember J-cloths? Oh. Okay. I'm getting quite a few rolls. Dry it. There's definitely some more there. It's like magic. <laughs> See? Now there, I'm tearing, and I'm purposely doing that to show you. Now maybe it's tearing because I missed with the glue or the glue dried so fast. And that's okay. That's why I'm calling this the imperfect image transfer. It can be frustrating when you're expecting something perfect and uh, and hard to let go of those expectations. That's why I love art journaling so much because you get to experiment and play and and um, figure it out, figure out what works and what you like and what you don't like. Um, yeah. Now here, I didn't cut around anything. So if I was to put that on a background, you would and you wanted to paint that in, you would have to fill that all in. So sometimes you might want to cut it out. Um, I didn't cut too much around the feet. And so that wouldn't be very difficult to fill in and paint around. Even right around the bird, I didn't completely cut out the bird. And I think I did that partly because I find that Closer to the edges, you're going to get, like here, torn edges. So I'm thinking possibly if it's going to tear near the edge, then at least it'll tear outside of the bird. And I have more of a chance of recovering and not having to fix, if I want to, the bird. Let's see how this looks. <clears throat> and there's still more. I don't have to do the whole background. I can just focus on the bird. I want to make sure that that's really wet. I go really slowly, especially over the feet. So I can actually feel that black ink. It gets smoother. Not rough like. I'm going to post these photos before and after, or maybe just after, uh, on my um, on my website on my blog post, uh, and the link will be attached underneath the video. Let's see how this looks. I 
think that's as far as I'm going to go. So I'm going to wet it down. And apply some more gloss. Well, it's wet. That's the key. I want to keep that wet look. <sighs> the brushes collect some of the paper that's still on there, so I'm just rinsing that off. And if you don't care for the glossy finish when it's done, you could put matte medium over it. I'm actually going to put another coat over. Ooh, look at that. Now that would be very simple to go over and highlight with um, black or colors. You could turn this into a whole different species if you just change the color. It could be a purple bird. It could be any color you want. All right, so I am going to work on to the, uh, move on to the color one, the last one, and um, maybe speed this part up and jump to the end for a quick recap.
going to recap uh, what I did with the originals printed off here and the image transfers. They worked out pretty well. I'm really pleased with how clear they came up. Really like the color one. And I think that's, I did really well because I practiced quite a bit and did a whole bunch of other ones. And they don't always work out. Um, I got a little, I lifted a little bit too much there, which can be filled in. And some here. That's easily rectified. This one didn't work out too well. I, I don't think I pulled off enough, peeled off enough paper, but I also put gloss over wet and then gloss over the dry. And I think the gloss over wet shows that my little trick kind of works. And this one here got some areas that lifted below. That one's cute. I have a feeling I didn't get enough glue here or it dried too fast. Got an owl. Lost quite a bit near the edge. This one I cut out completely. This one I didn't. And lastly, the crow, which worked out pretty good. And I don't know if you can see, but I actually filled in some places with black Sharpie where it lifted the, the paper. This one was, that one's almost perfect. I'm really happy with that. So I hope you had some fun and uh, give this a try. Thanks.